Gain insight into 50 years of history in this edition of Israel Vision. Join your host, Dr. Jay and Meridel Rawlings, for a personal interview with a founding father of the modern Jewish state, former Jerusalem mayor, Teddy Kollek. One of the ancient names of Jerusalem is Ariel, or Lion of God. In fact, the lion is the symbol of the holy city on her flags and stones today. The prophet Isaiah spoke of the city Ariel, and he said that the multitude of nations that would come against Mount Zion would be defeated. Today we want to introduce you to one of the modern lions of Judah, Teddy Kolek the former mayor of Jerusalem from 1966 to 1994. Teddy, as he's still affectionately called, is a real father of the state of Israel and one of the principal builders of Zion. In fact, his Jerusalem foundation has raised millions of dollars worldwide to beautify and rebuild Jerusalem. But perhaps his most important contribution was his tenacious forging of equal rights for all the citizens of Jerusalem Muslim, Jewish, and Christian alike. We asked Mr. Kolek where he was at the founding of the state in 1948. I had just returned uh, for a few days from the United States. I was in the United States for, in order to buy arms and to recruit people that we needed. And uh, from time to time, as the communication were all uh, watched by the FBI and everybody else. I came on to have personal contact and I had arrived I think on the 12th or 13th and this was uh, the only good reason for my being allowed in because it was such a small room you must have seen the room by now and the demand for tickets or for permissions to entry was uh, tremendous but I got in and sat there and as I had been already before at the UN at the time of the voting, mm -hmm. so I was probably the only person who was at both these occasions. And, and uh, it was a deeply moving affair. And then uh, in the evening to see all the people dancing in the street, it was tremendous. You were aware, of course, of the American policy, the State Department, uh, suggesting that this was the worst possible time for a state to be created. Our kind of pro tem foreign minister, because there was no government yet, was Mr. Sharet, at that time still Sharetok, he changed his name afterwards into a more Hebrew fashion, was called in by Secretary Marshall, uh, the famous general, you know, who then had become Secretary of State. And, sec and uh, Marshall said to him, look, I have all the sympathy with you, but if you declare a state, you will be wiped out in a day or two. You have no army, you have no air force, all the Arab states will fall on you, there will nothing remain. We were at the time only 600,000 people. It was the whole of the asset. Mr. Ben-Gurion had for the last year or two done everything to strengthen it but uh, we were not allowed to buy any arms officially whatever we got was only uh, smuggled into Israel so uh, it was a very precarious situation and we had this warning not only from the United States but also from other friends of ours and they were all friends and they were worried and uh, without Mr. Ben-Gurion's foresight and his absolute deep persuasion that this was the moment, the first time that the United States and Russia had supported the creation of a Jewish state, and the great pressure of the tens of thousands of refugees who were still uh, moving around Europe but couldn't come here because the British didn't allow them to come in, all this together convinced him that we had to decide on a state and start it and being convinced that we would win. What was the most impressive uh, part of the, Mr. Ben-Gurion's uh, character? 
First of all, he was very stubborn and he believed in what he did. Although he was a good Democrat and uh, when there was a majority, he always accepted it. But uh, he tried always to convince and he was very convincing. But uh, in uh, this particular occasion, he also showed his usual foresight. I'll give you another example. The head of the German journal, the Spiegel, which you surely know, came to ask him one day in the very early 60s, I think, will uh, Germany ever be united, reunited again? because in Germany nobody believes that we will be able to reunite it in our lifetime. And uh, Ben-Gurion said, well, it will be reunited. This is a different Germany. And I can tell you when. It will be reunited within 15 to 20 years when Russia will crumble and not exist anymore. Now, this is a uh, great foresight. Or uh, I have a friend who is a uh, an uh, uh, Arab newspaper man who had in interviewed Mr. Ben-Gurion many years ago in Egypt and who wanted to see him again and they met at my house and Ben-Gurion said be sure there will be peace it may not be in my mi lifetime because I'm an old man but it will be in your lifetime you are still around for a long time and peace between Israel and the Arabs will come. So he had uh, great foresight. You were uh, Mr. Ben-Gurion's private secretary, is that his assistant? <laughs> I was his assistant in a sense, but uh, there was a big office, the Prime Minister's office, and I was the director of this office, but I was also the man who had the personal contact with him. On a day-to-day -day basis? You On a day, well, I had a room as close to his as his ears. Do you think that his um, charisma or his style of, of leadership influenced you in your um, career? It couldn't be other, uh, otherwise. I can't analyze it, but I don't, I don't think anybody of the people around him remained without the influence that he had. He had great influence on people. He was a very strong uh, personality. But as I said, I remember various occasions when he was outvoted and accepted the vote of the majority. The visit of Konrad Adenauer here to uh, Israel and the impact that that had on the relationship between... Konrad Adenauer visited here when he was not anymore in office. Oh, okay. He met with Ben-Gurion at the Ward of Astoria. Uh, I have somewhere a picture. I was, I was present. There was a great argument between Mr. Ben-Gurion and Mrs. Golda Meir. She uh, didn't trust the Germans. She had information from somebody in our intelligence uh, service that uh, the Germans were supporting some kind of activities that were directed against us. And Ben-Gurion had met several Germans whom he absolutely trusted, whom he had known, and didn't believe this. This brought about a great tension between him and uh, uh, Golda. So, uh, he uh, continued in believing his own way and not accepting the warnings of Golda about the great danger that would come from Germany. He had uh, already told people that he believed in a united Germany, in a democratic Germany, and I had no doubts about this. As far as we were concerned, he uh, negotiated with Adenauer about some reparations for German uh, war deeds against the Jews uh, and uh, there was great argument over that as well, public argument 
demonstrations against doing anything with Germany in this country. And he uh, believed in this, put it through, and I think it was one of great steps to uh, further our economy of this very small country which had only 600,000 inhabitants. What was your personal opinion on that matter, on the matter of Germans uh, helping Israel? Financially? Well, I, on political matters, uh, was very much influenced by Mr. Ben-Gurion. Uh, on internal Jewish matters, I had sometimes arguments with him. But on foreign affairs, I bowed to his greater experience. It was here in 1967, right in front of the Lion's Gate of the old city of Jerusalem that history was made. For the first time in 2,000 years, the city of Jerusalem came under Jewish sovereignty. And perhaps Jesus even spoke about this event in the Gospel of Luke, where he said, Jerusalem will be trampled down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. We asked Mayor Teddy Kolek, the former mayor of Jerusalem, what was the most important event in his 28-year tenure as mayor of Jerusalem? And he responded, Well, uh, the most important event, of course, was uh, the unification of Jerusalem. When I was elected, we had only half of Jerusalem. And the other half was on the Arab side. There was no contact whatsoever. There was a little gate uh, which was open for diplomats to go there and back. But, uh, and for tourists, but no Israeli or no Arab, no Palestinian on the other side could move there and back anyway. So uh, when the city was uh, united, this of course was the greatest event uh, that one could imagine. And uh, I, can very, I can very well remember how we were all excited over it. Uh, unbelievable. One of the hallmarks of your life, I believe, and your, your expression of a, of, as a human being was to honor the rights of, of people, Arab, Jew, Christians, um, and that legacy continues on in Israel today. Um, we heard Mr. Tanyahu on CNN the other night uh, saying that Israel uh, endorses this policy of free access to the religious sites. Um, what was the, the reason that you were so strong in this area? Of well, uh, first of all, I grew up uh, up to the age of 22, 3 or something of the kind in Vienna. <coughs> Vienna was the capital of the Austrian Empire with Germans, Czechs, Yugoslavs of all kinds. Uh, Hungarians, uh, Slovaks, whatever you want. And, uh, but they grew up in a time when nationalism was almost forgotten. People started learning Esperanto because they believed there would be only one language for the entire world. So uh, I grew up in that atmosphere and I saw how people had learned to live together. So that was probably one of the uh, reasons that influenced me. But in generally, I believe that uh, only if you would give people equal uh, conditions and equal rights, uh, was there any chance of ever living together in peace. And I still believe so. The situation today in Israel and uh, with our neighbors, is um, has it changed at all? I don't think it has changed, but uh, I want to put in one uh, reservation. This is a kind of thing that develops over a considerably longer time. It, it, it doesn't come natural. Natural, you oversee uh, the adversary on the other side, and it takes time. And we are doing a lot of things in this respect. I, as a mayor, did a lot of things, for instance, and things that are not entirely obvious. If we have uh, developed a very, very beautiful zoo as a logical garden. And you see children, Jews, religious, non-religious, Arabs, others, all looking at the same elephant, or the same uh, lion. Uh, over a generation or two, they learn to, to live together. And there are many, many such uh, 
examples. You have to work at this conscientiously, otherwise it will take even longer. Uh, what are your hopes and aspirations for, now that we've reached this jubilee, uh, what would be your hopes and aspirations for the future of, of Israel? Well, we are still very far away from it. We have made in these 50 years tremendous progress. We have learned to be farmers and soldiers and, uh, uh, forgive me, bureaucrats and uh, everything, scientists, whatever you like. What we haven't yet learned is statecraft. On this we still have to make a great deal of progress. But I am sure this will be a strong, progressive Jewish state with full rights for Palestinians, with full rights for all the religions, Muslims, Christians. And mind you, we have almost 40 different Christian uh, denominations here in the city. And we have Jews from 104 different cultural backgrounds. All this has to be united in, in, in one population. But we'll, we'll make it. With great difficulties, with setbacks, it doesn't come all by itself. Uh, you can't be too optimistic about the immediate results, but the end results will be very good. You're a pragmatist, and you don't have much time for inefficiency. But what would you say if they dis if the Oslo Accords, the peace process, said that Jerusalem was to be divided again. I think myself, it depends what you mean by divided. I myself think Jerusalem should be divided into districts. In every district, you, people should be allowed to vote their own uh, representation. All this should be one city. Uh, the fact to tie together too strongly will not work. But if we will find a way, as I described, I think we'll make it. You believe, in the, you believe that we'll have peace in Jerusalem? I am convinced we'll have peace in Jerusalem. As it is, you see, uh, we did a great deal. Uh, the Arabs, for instance, had no health program and no health service when the city was united. You have today the, the best clinic in the country. They got the first prize which deals with 120,000 Arab patients who are inscribed and who get the same service as everybody else uh, in the country, as every Israeli gets in the country. You have, uh, we, we introduced first-class libraries, uh, schools and so. This must show one day, and it will. How about the education, to educate young Palestinians uh, what is being done in that area to, to give them an alternative than, than, than demonstrating and fighting and throwing stones and etc.? This is very difficult because you, it is not the question of the pupils, it's the question of the teachers. You have to educate the teachers first. And this takes time. And it doesn't happen by itself. And we have to be uh, patient over this because if we lose patience, then uh, we certainly won't make any progress. You have many friends around the world, in the Jewish community especially, through your Jerusalem Foundation and your, your, your career, but you also have many Christian friends, people who are praying every day for the peace of Jerusalem. We have a program through our small organization uh, called Praying for the Peace of Jerusalem Street by Street. And uh, I got this idea because I saw the uh, Mismar Hazris Ezrahi and I said, this is what we should do in the spiritual realm as well. Two by two, praying for each street. <clears throat> and so, what would you say to pe if you knew that people around the world were praying for the peace of your Jerusalem, what would you say to them? Well, uh, we have practical examples. We have uh, a Christian embassy here in the city. Uh, at some time or other, uh, the uh, various embassies left Jerusalem and went to Tel Aviv 
because there had been some kind of a decision which I uh, opposed at the time. And uh, the people who suggested it are still around and are not ashamed of themselves. But it was a, a, a silly thing to do at the time. And, uh, but when all these embassies left, a Christian organization started the Christian embassy in order to set this off. And uh, they have uh, every fall a convention here to which 12 to 15,000 people come. Uh, and I'm very proud of it and very happy. They march through the streets of Jerusalem and uh, to all our joy. Would you like, is there anything else you'd like to say to us at this point? Uh, be optimistic and believe in the future. <laughs> okay, thank you. God bless you. I'd may have asked well, when one looks at the peace process and the political problems facing Jerusalem in the short term, it's not so easy to be optimistic about Jerusalem's future. However, people everywhere are exhorted through Scripture to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. After all, it is the city of the great King. And we believe and hope and know that the Messiah has promised to bring shalom to his city of peace. When Jesus looked over the city of Jerusalem right from this vantage point on the Mount of Olives, he said to Jerusalem, I'm not coming to you again until you say, Baruch Abba Bashem Adonai, or in Hebrew this means, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, or in modern simple terms, welcome home. And it was Teddy Kolek that so beautifully exemplified this when he once said, I know that I have the most important job in the world, because I have to get Jerusalem ready for her Messiah. San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we're representing not only Texas, but the United States, and we do love Israel. Yeah. 
because of the not only the crisis but all of the, the turmoil that's been in this land for so long, we want Israel to know that not only does Texas stand beside her, but the people of America is also at their side. We believe that this land is special, the people are special, and because the land is special and the people are special, we want to represent the God of Israel because we love the God of Israel, and the God of Israel is the God of America. Amen.